Are you protecting your students' privacy whenever you're emailing a colleague? Let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, Gmail has a built-in confidential mode. So let's have a look at confidential mode. Let's see why we may use it, how it works, and what we can do with it. Now, with GDPR and PDPA, many schools are looking at privacy regulations and therefore managing the way we communicate about our students with colleagues is even more important. Now, let's go ahead and jump into Gmail. Now, you can see here, I have my Gmail inbox open and I'm going to click on compose a new message. So let's go ahead and compose this message. Now I'm about to send a very confidential email to a colleague about a student. Now that colleague is going on a school trip, a field trip, and it's very important for them to know about the student's medication. However, I do not want that information leaked or shared or printed. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all add our recipient. I'm going to add that teacher, there we go. Subject, info for the trip. And then I'm going to add confidential. And the reason I'm adding the word confidential to the subject is so that the teacher wouldn't accidentally open it up on a big screen, on a whiteboard. We've all done it. And therefore it's always great to have that in that subject head, it makes it much easier for people to be aware of the sensitive information. I'm just going to say student A needs his medication at let's say 1400 hours each and every day. There at the bottom, you can see Gmail is already scanning this information and automatically knows because I put that word there, maybe try confidential mode. Well, we are going to try the confidential mode. Let's go ahead and click on this lock and this opens up confidential mode. What I can do now is I can set an expiry for this email. In other words, they will only have access to this email for one day or one week in case they forget to delete it or archive it, it will automatically self-destruct. So I'm going to set it to a week because it is important for them to be aware of this information. Now I can also set an SMS passcode. That means that they will ask me which phone number do you want to send this code to? And then the person receiving the code has to use that code in order for them to be able to read the email. Now this does not work in every country. Now I've written an extensive blog post on the confidential settings and which countries are supported. You'll find the link in the description below. Now I'm not going to set an SMS passcode. I'm going to click on save. This is now ready to be sent. Now I'm going to send this email to teacher two. So we can double check here, the content will expire. They won't have the option to forward, copy, print or download the email. All good, I'm ready to send it. Let's send that email. Now I'm going to open up the Teacher2 account and let's see what that email looks like. So here in Teachers2 inbox, they have that email right there. Info for the trip, confidential. And because I set it to confidential mode, you can see that we don't get that preview snippet. Instead of giving us a snippet, it says this message was sent in confidential mode open it to view the content. This is the first step of really protecting your students' privacy. You can open up that email and there we go. It opens it up in confidential mode. In other words, we have the information within this box. It says when it will expire and automatically self-destruct. But more importantly, I cannot forward this message. If I go to the message above, I'm also unable to click on any of the words or copy any of the information. Great if you really want to make sure that nothing is copied or forward it to other people. Okay, so what happens when I click on print? Well, when I click on print, same thing. That information is still protected. You can see here from the preview, this message was sent, view the email, but they don't see the actual content of this email. You can cancel this and again, I don't see the content of that email. Now, it's not perfect. Your colleague could always take a screenshot or pick up their phone and take a picture with their camera, but at least this indicates clearly to your colleagues or to anyone that you're sharing this with that this information is to be kept confidential. Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, scroll down, let me know in that comment section below, click on the like and subscribe button, make sure that you share it out, hit that notification bell, all the good stuff. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.